Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Grassroots Cricket. I'm Bairam Kazi and with me is Iman Arbab and we're here in front of you today to discuss the PSL trades and retentions. Lots of drama Iman and we've seen the PSL mature into this league now that everyone is very invested. The fans are going crazy and they're butting heads with each other. Uh, this spectacle that's happening on social media and all of that. You're a part of it as well. Uh, what's it like? How do you feel about it? Yeah, I know as as a Lahore Kalandar fan, it's obviously really fun for me because uh, we're not really involved with anything. But there's a lot going on, like you said, this year just feels different. Hmm. Um, when they started with the post on the PSL official account, of course, it was a bit underwhelming. Some of the picks that they were the the foreign players they were announcing were just like not that big deals. Um, but then the Nasim saga started. I think it hmm. really just snowballed from there. Um, and to the point that we saw some really, really massive trades in just the last couple of days, which I think hmm. is amazing. So, which one do you think was bigger? Was it the Imad Hassan trade or was it the Ifti and Riley Rousseau trade? I feel like I want to say Imad because Imad is a captain, right? And he's hmm. been with KK for so long. But the thing is, the implications of the Riley and Iftikhar trade are massive hmm. because there's a platinum pick in world as well. Riley's obviously one of the best performing foreign players that we've had in the league. And Iftikhar, I mean, he's, he's amazing. I, I don't think he's had kind of the blockbuster PSL season yet, but he's great value as a local player. Hmm. Um, so, and then and when the platinum pick comes into play, then obviously there's a question of will Bhutan be picking the same shot with that? Hmm. Or even better yet, will they be picking like someone like Klassen if he's is if he's signed up for the league? So it, it just it's an incredible, incredible trade for Mudan in particular. Um, it remains to be seen if if Quetta are actually going to be able to use Rousseau the way that Mudan is doing. But yeah, yeah, I mean, homecoming for Riley Rousseau, of course, he started yeah. his PSL journey with the Quetta Gladiators. But you really, you know. It begs to ask the question or whatever, like I still can't understand what Quetta saw in this deal because you're giving away Ifti Mania, okay? He's not yeah. just an on-field presence, but you get so much off-field value with him, with the marketing Absolutely. and everything. You can cash in on that big time. So you lose that. You lose a platinum pick, you know, first pick in the draft, which is also huge. And you yeah. gain Riley Rousseau. So sure, you gain a good player, but that's a lot to lose, isn't it? It is, it is. And honestly, I love that you mentioned Ifti's off-field presence. I think the way he even announced his mm. signing with Muldan was incredible. Probably yeah. one of the best announcements I've ever seen because it was so understated. It was relevant. It was like something Switch Hit would do. Um, mm. For those who don't know Switch Hit, check out their Twitter account. They're incredible with their cultural references and very embedded in Pakistan cricket. So it's so, so clever. And like you said, that's hilarious. Even mm. um, the whole Bhai saga of him calling Ali Bhai, yeah. excellent Dutch. Like, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, if the car really knows how to, you know, um, well, pander to pop culture and he's an icon exactly. and I love his journey. <laughs> you know, people made ageist jokes on him, then the whole cha-cha-cha-cha thing. Mm -hmm. And now he's Ifti Mania, he's a brand on his own and I love this Absolutely. revolution of sorts, you know. But uh, coming towards, uh, well, I guess we'll talk about Karachi Kings, right? Because Imad Wasim was their captain. Imad of, of obviously also recently retired from international cricket and we can perhaps have a podcast on its own on that. But, uh, you know, uh, he was a top performer for them last season. He had really come of age as a batting all-rounder, I would say. Imad was quite consistent with the bat and was scoring tough runs, crucial runs. And Karachi have gotten Hassan Ali, who wasn't starting for Islamabad United. His stocks have depleted in limited overs cricket of late. So, yeah, I mean, uh, is this just Heather Azar carrying out a complete overhaul at the Kings? Or how do you see all of this? Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like Islam definitely got the better end of the deal. Unless, like you said, it's exactly what Karachi wanted, just to start from scratch. I think Imad, if you think about it objectively, after after the Islam signs kind of like got over the shock, I was like, he fits your brand. Hmm. He He's exactly what you'd want in your side. It, it then kind of begs the question of whether Islam is going to consider leaving either Fahim or Asif. They're in a bit of a uh, trouble yeah. there. But that's, that's a different conversation. When it comes to Karachi Kings, it's really interesting. It really speaks to what Heather Azhar and maybe his rumored new captain, Sean Masood, maybe, we don't know yet, mm. uh, are thinking of doing with the team. 
uh, Hassan's obviously a great presence to have. He didn't, I mean, he had a pretty good understated season last year for Samba, but like you said, he's not exactly the Hassan that he used to be. It's hmm. not, I mean, you can't, in, in, a, in a T20 league, you're trading a high profile all rounder for a bowler who is probably, yeah, he's past his prime. So, I mean, hmm. that's, clear, that's clearly like a lot of other things going on in the background. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned how Shan might be, you know, on his way to Karachi and that would be a homecoming for him as well. Of course, Imad yeah. is an Islamabad boy. After his Swansea days, he was an Islamabad <laughs> boy. So, yeah, technically, I guess uh, going to Glamorgan or Gloucestershire. Yeah, Gloucestershire, I think. That would be a proper homecoming for him. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting how Amir, Mohammed Amir, is also seemingly mm-hmm. on his way out. He might be going to Quetta. And, you know, you're a Lahore Columbus fan, right? The one yeah. thing that the Lahore Kalandas did really, really well over the course of several years was to build a solid core, you know, in T20 cricket. And that core then brought them two consecutive trophies. Karachi are getting rid of their core, seemingly, yeah. in entirety, right? And they're going to be building a new one. You've got kids like Kasim Akram, you know, who I think should be getting a lot of game time now. Heather Ali maybe is someone that they could build that team around. How do you look at Karachi Kings going into the future? Because obviously, you know, Heather, Heather Azad is accomplished. Right, and mm-hmm. we all know that Heather by uh, there's a method behind the madness, and it seemed like mm-hmm. Karachi Kings had no method prior. Yeah, so it'll obviously take him some time, right? We can't expect results right off the bat from Karachi this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, last year, ahead of PSL, I did I did a draft with my friends, and and one of the smartest ones in our group picked up Karachi Kings, and we asked him why, why would you do that, mm. and he said, well, because I want to revamp. And he did. He started from scratch. And that was a mock draft. Obviously, nothing mm. serious. And But that's kind of what we expected from Karachi last season. Instead, they ended up picking up random foreign players. I think Imran Tahir was the, one of the craziest picks I've ever seen. Especially and you Tai. And you Tai was, was there. It was just random, yeah. <laughs> and then they had like Malik and Kasim was being benched for Malik. And it was like, what are you doing? You were supposed to be starting from scratch. One and of their first now, picks. Yeah. One of their first picks in the draft was James Fuller, who barely featured. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was, was, it was an odd one. Hmm. Yeah, but now it feels like they're starting from scratch. And look, they're going to be playing catch up probably this season. I don't expect the playoffs. Uh, we don't know what they're going to do in the draft, but the way they're looking, hmm. it's going to be a young side. It's going to be a young side with some like energetic people. I mean, Heather by himself is, is kind of like uh, that guy that really pumps the team up. But you, you can't expect a lot from them just yet. But it is refreshing to know that the city that I'm from, even though I don't support the team anymore, mm-hmm. is finally doing what they should have been doing two seasons ago. But yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, I do have faith that, you know, Heather Azar can revamp this yeah. franchise and maybe some good can come out of this. But I think it's too soon right now. But of course, you never know with T20 yeah. cricket. Maybe they do make the playoffs. It's never like a sure shot thing in this format at all. Uh, let's talk yeah. about your team a bit. Rashid Khan might be injured, won't be available for this PSL is what I'm hearing. Now, Lahore Kalandras, if you look at their side, maybe, you know, someone in the middle order was the only slot you could you would think that they could, you know, mm-hmm. upskill on or upgrade on. But without Rashid, I mean, sure, they've won a PSL without Rashid in the playoffs and all that. But are you concerned? Is there any reason to be concerned if you're a Lahore Kalandras fan? Look, it's hard for me to admit this. But yeah, I mean, I think everyone is concerned. Rashid is is integral, and mm. it's, uh, not just for his spin bowling, which obviously is the best in the world, and no question about it. But also because he adds all rounder value. And mm. granted, we didn't use it much. Like this, he didn't really show up much with the bat last season. He did have, I think, two cameos. But um, having him at seven eight is is a game changer for Lower Karandas. Mm. And we already have to kind of fill our middle order. We have to find that wicket keeper as well. Um, so losing out on Rashid means that if we retain Sikandar Alta, that's our lead and maybe only spinner. And that's that's insane to me. That's it's not. I mean, I, and the thing is, if we are to consider maybe someone like Noor Ahmed or even I don't know who's going to be available and who wasn't. Noor Ahmed obviously depends on whether Quetta's going to retain him or not. Hopefully they don't. Um, but you know, it's going to be a gamble. When we're not going to be able to match Rashid, we're probably going to need two players to match what Rashid is doing on his own. Um, and and that puts us on the back foot, especially when you kind of see everyone else building these scary super teams. 
um, and by everyone else, I mean, of course, Bultan and, mm. and maybe Zamba, if they pick up Naseem. I don't, we don't know what's going to happen with that. But yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up Naseem Shah because uh, he was the one who started all of this PSL, you know, <laughs> trades and retentions hype. Yeah. And we still don't know where Naseem Shah is headed, right? And a lot of clubs of, sorry, franchises in this case have hinted at signing him up. Peshawar Zalmi was very vocal about it, but it seems like it's all fluff with Peshawar. At least that's what I feel. And then, yeah. you know, Islamabad and Multan look like the most likely candidates to snap him up. Which team would benefit the most from, you know, adding Naseem to their arsenal? Islamabad, 100%. I don't even think Bhutan really need uh, Naseem. I mean, if he if they, he comes to them, obviously Naseem is one of the best T20 players Pakistan has to offer. He's going to transform any team's bowling attack. I mean, even if Lahore Kalanders took him, we will, we will fit him into the team because it's Naseem Shah. Um, but Islamabad, what they lack right now is a top field bowler, especially with Imad on the mm. side, and especially with their hopefully reliance on Hassan Nawaz for the number three spot. The top mm-hmm. order isn't a concern anymore. The middle order isn't a concern anymore. It's just a point top tail bowler. And if you get Naseem Shah, I mean, that's the team to beat. Like, even with Islamabad's bottling jeans or whatever you want to call it, like, it's hard to, uh, to like, even think of a team better than them in, in PSL. That being said, um, I feel like, Kara- I mean, I heard that Karachi was in the race at one point. Mm? I think. Really? Yeah. A- Apparently, like, don't take my word for it, but apparently mm. they offered him Ad and Amir, and quite I was like, no, like, they didn't mm. entertain it. Apparently, I don't know, don't, yeah, but uh, if Karachi had gotten it, maybe that would have been good for them. The shower as well, I mean, everyone saw how poor the shower's bowling was last season, but like you said, I don't think they really took this deal seriously, mm-hmm. uh, which is sad for the fans and for the team. I mean, they really, really should have, but yeah. I mean, Javed Afridi is the same guy who wanted to buy Chelsea Football Club, this one. So, yeah, I don't know about that. And uh, that's the thing with Peshawar. I just feel like it's always the big talk with them. Sure, they got Barbara Azam and everything. But uh, as a franchise, I feel they've regressed. And I do have similar feelings about Islamabad as well. But I feel like they're shaping up nicely this time, particularly, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, if they do manage to get Naseem Shah, that's a lot of boxes ticked. Because if you remember last season, it was individual brilliance that got them mm-hmm. as far as they got, right? Fahim Ashraf, Azam Khan, those two guys won them some games that they had no business winning. So, Absolutely. yeah, I'm interested to see how Multan and Islamabad shape up. Because, of course, uh, just to tell people, there's no conflict of interest over here. Hijab uh, is the director of Grassroots Cricket and the uh, general manager of Multan Sultans. But Iman and I... We just work for grassroots cricket, right? We have nothing yeah. to do with Multan Sultans. And also a disclaimer that maybe the Naseem deal is done by the time this video is out. So excuse us. If that yeah. So I do feel like if he comes to Multan, he does add value because, um, well, Isanullah is injured, right? Mm. And oh, yeah. think of an attack which features, like in the future, which features Shah Nawaz Dahani, Naseem Shah and Isanullah. Now that's a really, really sturdy pace bowling attack, yeah. right? So I think that Multan, which is already a great team, it's a franchise that has done so well over the course of the last few years. And of course, you know, uh, they are going through a rebuild. It'll be interesting to see how they fare. There will be new challenges. But I have one more reservation. Should Naseem be playing this PSL at all? I don't think he will. That's my no. guess, which is even more insane to me that there's so much hype about where he's going and he might yeah. not even play. Um, I really, really hope, because they said six months. And, hmm. I mean, do the math. The PSL is yeah. coming before that. Um, I think it would be really, really irresponsible to have him play, um, especially since the World Cup is right after, I mean, a couple hmm. months after. And... God forbid something happens. We can't, I mean, we can't even risk it. Like, it's yeah. not, we can't even risk a nigga. I don't, mm. I don't want to hear the scene feels a little bit of pain. Um, Because <laughs> I know millions of people will just lose their minds. Uh, I think it was PSL 7 maybe, where at the back end, there were loads of players getting injured. I think Fahim and Hatun Ali just before the Australia series at home. And there was a lot of backlash. I mean, you can only imagine how much more there would be if it's mm-hmm. Naseem and if it's a World Cup. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I really, really hope that he rests and comes back fully. It's fine if you wait. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would, uh, you know, concur that sentiment. 
and uh, echo it because Naseem Shah is priceless and you've got to wrap him up in cotton wool. He's an all-phase bowler. In T20s, sure, there are not a lot of phases to begin with, but he is an out-and-out -out superstar and he's so young and the only way I can probably see him play this PSL is if he goes to Kane Williamson's surgeon because I don't know how Kane did it. <laughs> came back from an ACL injury and now he's scoring tons in Bangladesh. Uh, also, you know, came back and scored runs in the World Cup. But yeah, like, if there is a risk of aggravation of that shoulder injury, then it's a no-go zone. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. You don't risk him because you've got a World Cup, a T20 World Cup coming up and you're going to need him for test cricket. Right now, we don't have Absolutely. them for, for this Australia tour, but he's going to be the person who will, alongside Shaheen Shafridi, be leading your test attack. And that's mm -hmm. the thing. That's why I don't want both of these guys to be playing bilateral T20s or useless T20s because they're going to have to play all test matches, both Shaheen and Naseem. At least I would. I would never rest them for yeah. a test match. So, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so far, based on what we've seen, which team do you think is the, uh, the out-and-out winner with respect to these trades and retentions? Well, it's a good thing that Lahore isn't a part of this because, you know, mm. I would have to say Lahore. Um, <laughs> but no, barring Lahore, uh, I think that if Islamabad seal this, which they might, they, they would win 100% because getting both Imad and Naseem is mm. massive. Yeah. But... If Multan get the scene, then the whole platinum pick and if the car while trade is genius. So, yeah. you know, it really depends on the scene. We can really shift um, whichever team, but that's, that's how I feel. What about you? Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because we don't know where Naseem will go. But as yeah. things stand, I think Multan is the bigger winner. Because if the is experiencing a purple patch, yes, there's an opportunity mm -hmm. cost attached to Riley. Of course, he's been yeah. a top performer in the PSL year in, year out. He gets those runs. He scored the fastest century in PSL history. And then he broke his own record a few yeah. days later. Yeah. Right? So he's that kind of player. He's goated uh, in the PSL. So, of course, there's that opportunity cost. But if you're getting a platinum pick plus Iftikhar, who I think is probably the most underrated Pakistan cricketer in T20 cricket at least. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a coup. And uh, for me, Multan is uh, winning this battle right now. But Islamabad is also right up there because, look, if you've got Shadab and Imad as your all-rounders, that's a lot of depth with both bat and ball. You know, mm -hmm. they might not even have to bowl their quota as things stand, right? We don't know mm -hmm. that yet because Fahim's going to be in there. You throw in a couple of pacers. So it's interesting how those teams are shaping up. But yeah, those are the two I would say are right up there for me. And Multan is edging Islamabad out slightly. Mm -hmm. Of course, if Islamabad get Naseem Shah, then they win that battle. But I yeah. guess the losers, the losers of all of this for me would be Quetta and Peshawar. Even Karachi is better yeah. than those guys. I like the mindset yeah. Karachi is going with, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. I think Peshawar just... I mean, honestly, the worst thing for me was watching Peshawar fans realize that they their management didn't do anything mm. in this museum trade that sucks like to be mm. let down like that is awful um but yeah no quite a, I mean they're losing the scene no matter what happens no matter who they get they, they've lost the scene and that's your future captain kind of material mm -hmm. but yeah 100 percent, i completely agree with you they've lost naseem and if Right? Sure, they've gotten Riley, but they've lost, lost yeah. 50 mania. It's interesting, yeah. yeah. It's just a sheer lack of direction from Quetta Gladiators over the last couple of seasons, or even more than that now. They've been mediocre or even worse than mediocre for a while. And uh, mm -hmm. it's really sad because Quetta was one of those teams that in the first few seasons was right up there with the best, right? It was them, Absolutely. Islamabad, Peshawar. Those were the teams everyone kind of looked up to and... You know, the others were languishing at the bottom. So I do hope that better things are around for those clubs. And yeah, Peshawar, why I feel sorry and sad for Peshawar Zalbi fans is because the hype is there. It's all, you know, they feel like they've gotten Naseem already. Months before, Peshawar was saying that Naseem is pretty much locked down. And right now, they're the least likely franchise to snap him up. So I do feel for them over there. But what I love is that there is so much fanfare around the PSL. And we're, still, we're so far away from the PSL, right? That goes on to show how the league over eight seasons and now heading into the ninth has really matured. And that's mm -hmm. what you want. Now, I personally am non-partisan. I'm impartial. I don't really care who wins, who loses. Sure, I'm not a big Karachi Kings fan, but I, I'd be hard-pressed to find big Karachi Kings fans, right? That That's not my fault. But I love to see this. I love to see hardcore fandom. And I think that is great for the league in general. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and the thing is, as someone who is biased now, 
I'm also like not the, the purest of those. I've supported mm-hmm. Karachi Kings before when mm-hmm. PSL first started out with Islamabad United. Mm-hmm. So watching the league kind of grow, because Islamabad, so I was just like, oh, Mizbah. I wasn't as invested even then, mm-hmm. even though I watched all the matches as I am now. I mean, since I mean, fans knowing this much background knowledge and who's mm-hmm. being created by who also speaks to how Pakistan is kind of like developed as a T20 powerhouse. In mm-hmm. like the last couple of years, I know that people are disheartened by the lack of trophies. Um, and I hate to be that, oh, but we made the final and semi-final ball person. But it does help the PSL to have mm-hmm. superstars like Shaheen and Naseem and Babur and even Shan Masood perhaps leading Karachi Kings is, is going to be really great for the league, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, it's it's a lot better than we, where we were last year, I would hope. I think I think the draft as well, and barring quite I don't know what they're gonna do there. Um, but barring quite everyone else should do well in the draft, which we'll also be covering, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like we've done it two years in a row. Uh, the yeah. draft is going on live. I think you were on last time, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a fun. non-GRC employee, so we'll probably <laughs> do something similar this time. Go over the draft and have some people on, and we can just discuss Absolutely. it in real time. So you guys stay tuned for that. That's it for this episode, I suppose. We've talked about all the PSL drama. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. We'd love to hear them. Which team is winning this drafts or retentions and trades battle? Which team is losing? We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, uh, you'll catch us again soon. We'll be creating regular content. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for out for some new podcasts and that sort of stuff as well. But that's it for now. Thank you for joining, Iman. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Baram. Yep. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for similar content on Grassroots Cricket. Yeah.